Hey, what's up everybody? It's Brian here with another tutorial in After Effects. This time we're going to be making this effect right here. Let's go ahead and get started, but before we do, a couple of things to get out of the way. I am currently in After Effects 2020. Uh, if you're in a previous version, some of the effects that I'm using here may not work out in the same exact way. For instance, I'm going to be using the Cinema 4D render that comes with After Effects. You're also going to need access to Adobe Illustrator. But if you're in Creative Cloud, you already have access to those. So let's go ahead and dive right in and let's get started. <laughs> All right, here we are. So we're in After Effects 2020 now. This effect is actually really simple and easy to do. Uh, there's no third party plugins being used, by the way, that I should clarify. So you can actually do this effect right now at home. It's not hard to do. A little bit of a disclaimer, as I, I might add, I'm using a little bit of stock footage here that you're probably not going to have access to. Um, and I won't be sharing this, but you'll be able to find stock footage like this anywhere or you can go shoot it. The crux of this tutorial though is gonna be focused around one major thing and that is using Illustrator elements. I have an AI file that I have imported here that I'll show you guys in a few seconds. So if you have an Illustrator file, this will be a perfect tutorial for you. Maybe you have your logo or your you know your Twitch logo, your YouTube logo, and you wanna use, use it for a snazzy new intro. Well, this might be a method that you use. And this isn't the only method that I'll use for something like this. So let's go to get started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new composition, 1920 by 1080. Uh, I'll just go to full for now. Four seconds is long enough for this tutorial. This is just a logo sting. And we're gonna call this logo sting AI. Uh, I'm gonna call this tutorial because I have a lot of compositions happening right now. Uh, that way I know which one's which. So let's put that in output. And the next thing I'm gonna do is bring in that AI element. Now here it is, it's Youth at the Well logo. Right off the bat, you can't see much because it's black. If I uh, transparent the whole composition, you can see that it's there. So let's go and fix this up right now. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna come over here and right click, go to create, and I wanna create shapes from vector layer. Now this is why I'm using an AI because you can't really use this in any other format. Um, there are a couple, you can bring in SVGs. There are some other processes you can use, but you need the data of the paths and that comes in an AI file. So we're using AI. What it's gonna do is gonna create a whole new shape layer for you. We no longer need this AI here on the bottom. So I'm gonna shy that away. And then let's work on this. So the first things first, let's get rid of what we don't need. I can tell you one through 14, I don't need, I don't want that text. And I have 15 through 16, okay? Now, I also wanna flip this into 3D. And I also want to come up here. I've already done it because I've been working in After Effects all day, but your render is not going to be set to Cinema 4D. And this is not going to show up until you flip into 3D. So what you should do is come up here, click on this, and then if you're in the proper version, you're going to have Cinema 4D. And this is why I said that it's key that you're in a more modern version of After Effects. If you're in an older version of After Effects and you don't have Cinema 4D, you will have access to other 3D renders, but you may not have access to the tools that I do. So let's go ahead and hit OK here. And I'm gonna turn this back on. Before I do anything else, I wanna come into the contents here and on the fills, I wanna flip to white. Uh, no. Colors don't matter. Um, this just matters for me. So whatever AI you're using to follow along with this tutorial, go and have at it. Do whatever colors you want. We gotta bring in a few more assets before we do anything else. For instance, we gotta bring in a camera. Uh, 35 millimeter is fine. Let's call this shot cam. We also got to bring in a null object and we're going to call this camera control. And then we got to bring in a light. We're going to leave it as a point light for now, but you can use any other light setup that you want. But uh, I just gonna use one light for now. Cast shadows is okay, but we're going to be playing with a lot of these settings. Once we create the light, we're going to call this key light. Okay. And then I want to duplicate this light and we're going to call this fill light. Now I could use a third light here. I, in the final render that you guys just saw, I didn't, um, but you know, you can use a third light to get three point lighting or you can just use one light if you know, you wanna go that route. I ended up with two point lighting and it looked decent. So here we go, we got the key light. I'm gonna move the key light over here. Um, and then I'm actually gonna come over here to two view horizontal on this view, click it. And I'm gonna switch to top if you don't have it. Uh, and then I'm gonna move the second light over and up like so. And we'll probably move these lights around here in a few. Uh, one other thing before we do anything else is I wanna come over here and I wanna delete the strokes um, on my shapes. So let's get rid of the strokes. Like that. Cool. So let's go ahead and set up this pr first shape layer using the geometry options. Now the geometry options are gonna come up once you flip to Cinema 4D. They will be grayed out if you're not in Cinema 4D. So let's go to the geometry options and I wanna bevel. I'm gonna switch it to convex. 
and I want to increase the bevel to, let's say 25. So if you come down here, you'll notice you've created an object now and it's starting to extrude out and that's what we want. Okay. The next thing I also want to do is I want a bevel depth. Let's increase that to, I think I have about 10 on the actual file. Um, and then we'll be able to see this if I come over here to the active camera and we can go back to one view now. So this is easier to see and I rotate my camera. You'll see that it's got an edge now. Okay. Go back to my camera and let's just hit reset. All right. So now we're getting places. If we also come down here too, let's hit AA on my outlines layer. I want to turn on cast shadows and right off the bat, you'll start seeing shadows start popping up. That's what we want. Uh, I want to increase my specular shininess to about 50. And let's lower the ambient to about 90. And I increase the diffuse to about 60. Basically, this is just changing the way our materials interact with our light or how light interacts with our materials of our object. The next thing I want to do is I want to duplicate my shape layer twice, like so. And then on the top one, let's come over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete 1617 on the middle one. We are going to delete 15 and 17. And on the bottom one, we are going to, if I can hit my hotkeys right, uh, we're going to delete 15 and 16. So basically what we did is we just separated our shape layer into three different shape layers and put each contents on its own shape layer. So on the beginning one, which is the V, I'm going to hit P. And what I want to do is I want to go to about negative 60 bring that forward and boom, right off the bat, you're seeing shadows start to hit other objects. And this is what we want. The middle one, we can leave alone. The bottom one, we can push back about 60 pixels in Z space. Now what I want to do is I want to play with our lighting a little bit. So click on the key light and hit AA to bring up our light options. And what I want to do is I want to actually add a fall off. So let's go to inverse square clamped. And then I want to increase the radius to about 750. I also want to diffuse my shadows. I do not want them this hard. I thought it looked really tacky with it that hard. So let's go to about 250 and see what it looks like. Yeah, it's a little diffused. So let's split the difference. Let's go to 100 actually. All right, that looks much better. Actually, what I can also do is to fall off this. There we go. So I just made some tweaks here. Tweak to your heart's content. You're not going to be able to repeat exactly what I'm doing because, you know, it's I, I hand placed these lights. But if you're using the actual values that I'm using here, uh, then go for it. Now, on the fill light, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to increase this to about 200 percent. And I don't need a fall off here. I just want this nice rim light here with my fill light. And now we're ready to start animating. Disclaimer, if you're on a computer that's a little bit slower than most or if it's an older computer, at this point in time, you are going to start to chug if you're dealing in 1080. So my advice while you're doing your animation is to come down here to third or quarter resolution and you might have an easier time. Um, if you're not able to animate at all on these, unfortunately, you're probably going to need to look into upgrading your machine if you want to start doing effects like this. So I'm just going to leave in auto and it's going to go down to half for me. And I just want to do a simple animation. Nothing crazy. Um, since I have a null object here, let's go ahead and parent the camera to the null. Uh, I just want to do a rotation. So I'm just going to hit R for rotation. Oh, switch this to 3D. And then on the Y axis, uh, I'm going to set a keyframe, drag this keyframe out a little bit. And then go to like there. And then I want to smoothen these keyframes up by highlighting them and hitting the F9 key. And we'll come back and work on those in the graph editor here in a few moments. But now on the shot cam, I actually want to create some depth and some distance. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and hit P on the shot cam, right click, separate dimensions. I want to set a keyframe actually, and I did this on the final. I actually want to drop this to about 2600. I want to pull this back. Okay. This number we'll use here in a few seconds, but I'm gonna set a keyframe on the Z position. And then let's go to about 800. So that we're on the other side. Don't worry about motion blur. Um, you can actually can't add motion blur the normal way, which is turning on the motion blur here. We're gonna add motion blur at the very end. All right, like I said, we'll play with these keyframes here in a little bit. Let's smoothen these out as well. And then the next thing I wanna do here is I wanna go to the very end 
and I'm going to animate in these objects. And I'm just going to throw in a simple animation. And I'm actually going to animate from the groups themselves using the transform groups. Uh, reason is because I only want to animate them on the 2D plane, which is the X and Y axis. I don't want to play with the Z axis, which is fine. Highlight position here. I'm going to set a keyframe so I have a place where they end. And let's go all the way up. And only on the first one, I want to hit F9. I actually want it to come to a hard stop. If you don't want it to come to a hard stop, great. This is just a more personal preference. Let's go to the next one. And then I'm actually going to grab this by just dragging that way. Let's move them that one out. And yeah, you could have done this animation a little bit earlier in the process. It doesn't really matter. Uh, After Effects is pretty procedural as a software. go and grab this one off cool now i'm going to highlight these three layers and just hit u for the keyframes actually i am also going to do these layers too and also hit u so we can see where everything's at kind of want them to come in to rest about right here let's just start dragging these keyframes over now that i've created them Let's take a look at that. Oh, we have a nice little animation going. Slow these down a little bit. I slow them down even more. Now let's play with the actual speed and uh, the velocities of our transition. So let's come over here to the Y rotation. I actually want to slow this one down, but I want it to ease in much more. A nice little rest on the uh, Y rotation. Let's go to the shot cam Z axis and I'm going to do the exact same, but this one will go even further. When you see me move things from side to side, I'm holding down the shift key so it stays on that value that I set for earlier. This one. That's a little extreme. Let's bring this back. Click on it, hold shift, bring it back. Maybe on this version that I'm creating right now, which is obviously different than what you guys just saw, I do smoothen these frames out. So let's come over here and just hit F9 on these keyframes and see what this looks like. And this is part of being a motion designer. You're constantly tweaking your frames, your keyframes, and seeing how they work out. And this is working for me uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. So we've pretty much taken a, a shape layer that we built in Illustrator, brought it into After Effects, used it to create 3D objects. We're animating those 3D objects in Z space while animating the camera around it. And uh, we have a pretty good, we have a pretty good animation here. And if this is what you came for this tutorial for, you can stop here. That's great. That's all you really need. You now know how to use an AI file in After Effects. But we're going to take this the whole nine yards. I'm going to show you guys how I added the motion blur and got some of that fall off effect here. Really easy to do. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of my layers and I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, and C. I'm going to pre-comp them and we're going to call this C4D Animation Tutorial. And here we go. Now, the next thing I also want to do is I want to double click here, bring this up, and I want to drag this out like so, so we can have this. We're going to copy some information over. We can use essential graphics here, but this is just an easier way to do it. I'm going to create a new null object as a data storage device, and we're going to call this controls. I'm going to come over here and add a slider control. And on this slider, I'm going to pick whip over to the shot camera Z axis. Okay. Let's drop that down. So the Z position, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to drag the pick whip over to the Z position here. And now you'll notice as I move my slider, it's going to animate along with this value here. It's just going to simplify your expressions down the line. I can even close that timeline now. And now we can focus on here. 
The next thing I want to do is I want to add an effect to our pre-comp here. I'm going to hold down control and spacebar using the FX console plugin from Video Copilot. If you don't know what that is, or if you don't have it, I'm leaving a link for you in the description below. It is a must have for all After Effects artists. I definitely recommend. So using control and spacebar with FX console, and I'm going to add a pixel motion blur. Switch that to automatic. Leave it at 20 for now. That's okay. Let's also enable motion blur and turn on motion blur for that layer as well. And now, since we are no longer using Cinema 4D because we're not in 3D anymore, we should have the motion blur. So now we have the motion blur back added back in and you can see it already looks 10 times more natural. It just looks so much better, it looks almost real. Um, obviously this isn't real, it's breaking the laws of physics, but it's it looks better. So now when we're dealing in classic 3D and After Effects, you have access to depth of field by using just simply the depth of field on your cameras and then playing with the parameters there. With Cinema 4D, you don't. So now that we're in a 2D scene using a Cinema 4D, essentially a render through the pre-comp, I can add a new adjustment layer here and we're gonna add a simple Gaussian blur. We're gonna repeat edge pixels and then I'm gonna hold down the Alter Option key and I'm gonna create an expression here. I'm gonna type in X equals, it's okay if you click over here, it's gonna break the uh, expression for now, but I just need to drop this down. So X equals pick whip to this slider and then colon. And then this expression is a math based expression. We're gonna type in ease and we're gonna type in X, bring that parameter back in that variable we just created. Uh, and then uh, dragging my slider over. So we have 800. I actually want this to stop right around zero, or I should say start right around zero. And then I want to grab to about, let's say negative 2400. And then I want to type in zero to 100. And now what's going to happen is as it flies in, we're going to have a little bit of a depth of field here. But I'm realizing I made a mistake already. So what I want to do is I want to shrink this parameter down. Let's say negative 1800. So I'm shrinking down the amount of space for these variables to work. So now instead of, you know, 2400 pixels, I'm only working with 600 pixels here to decide how fast to go from zero to 100. And this is an ease expression. It's not a linear expression. So it's going to it's going to correlate values with weighted values, essentially. And now we have depth of field, making this look even more natural using just a simple Gaussian blur. We don't necessarily have to use 100 either. We can do 250. We can do 60. I just picked 100 for this tutorial. All right, let's use another expression here with a solid. We're going to create a solid black layer here. I'm going to duplicate that, drag them both to the bottom. On the top black solid, I'm going to add a gradient ramp. And then let's switch this to a radial. Let's swap the colors. Let's move the center to about right there. Drag out the other part of the ramp like this. Let's change the colors here. Um, that looks pretty good. I didn't really want to use the exact same color, but it's okay. And then I'm going to scatter, just increase the scatter a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural. And then with the blend with the original, let's go up to about 80. I want this very soft effect. I don't want it very heavy. And now we've created a little bit of some depth to our scene. However, it's not perfect yet. So what I want to do is I want to come over here and hit T to bring up opacity. And let's go ahead and open up the controls again. Now on the opacity, we're gonna hold down the option or alt key and start another expression. Let's create another variable X equals pick whip. Same thing that we did before. In fact, we're writing the exact same expression. So if you wanna copy it, go for it. But we're gonna change some of the values. So let's start at about, I'd say negative 500 this time. Again, subject to change. And then let's do 100 to zero. Now what's gonna happen is we're giving the illusion that the camera is flying forward because this is the camera Z position. And it looks like we're flying towards some form of light. I have some particles here that I like to use. So let's just drag some particles on. Use this size here, like so. And switch that to screen. And there we go. You've now successfully made this effect. And you don't have to use these particles, you can use anything else. I just like throwing in particles 
to add an extra sense of depth to my effects. So we pretty much started with an AI object, guys. We moved into After Effects and we created this animation right here using the built-in tools in After Effects with no third-party plugins or presets. Uh, I hope you guys can find some inspiration from this tutorial to do some pretty cool things with your logos, your animations, or maybe even some VFX out there. I would love to see that. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this tutorial. Please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, guys. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you had a lot of fun, and I'll see you in the next video. The storm is coming, but I'm prepared.